safety measures at every step. Let us learn this. This is a hypermature Morganian cataract. Let us observe management of this case. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. This patient has come with intraocular pressure of 30 millimeter of mercury and the patient is going to develop intractable phacolytic glaucoma unless we take up the case for surgery as soon as possible. We have to put the patient on acetazolamide and the patient has to bear the side effects of acetazolamide which is very bothersome. By this time we have made a side port and now we are going to stain the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble. This is a bit of adrenaline to keep the people dilated during surgery. Now I always wash the dye out and then uh, fill up the anterior chamber with visco. This keeps a uniform uh, environment in the anterior chamber. Concentration of dye is uniform all around and gives better visibility in my opinion. Some visco over the cornea for better visibility. And now in such cases, it's not a good idea to start to initiate capsulorexis with the iterator. We must do this. We must take a sharp needle and pierce the center of the anterior capsule. Otherwise, if there is genuine, if is weak, it will be more stressed if we try to pierce the capsule with iterator forceps. Milky fluid has been aspirated, visco has been injected. Now we make the capsular tag holdable and now we go anti-clockwise and see what happens here at 7 o'clock. There is a band. There is a fibrous band and I try to pull this and there is too much stress on the jonule and it appears that I will go, I will just end up tearing the genular fibers if we just try hard. So what safety measure we can take here? I'm making a small stab incision and I have asked for an iris hook. Placing the iris hook just uh, uh, beneath the rexus margin and this iris hook will provide counter traction when I pull the capsular tag. So this is the safety measure we must take if the if some fibrous band is on the way. Inject visco again, go again with the uterator forceps, hold the capsular tag. Now as I pull the capsular tag, there is counter traction by the iris hook and easily we can overcome this fibrous band, yes. And now complete the rexis and I end up uh, making a small rexis. One way it is good because if we try to put uh, a CTR that is capsular tension ring, uh, it is better to have a small rexis initially. Otherwise, if the rexis goes to periphery, putting a seat becomes almost impossible. Now I remove the milky fluid, inject visco and then take the CTR, capsular tension ring. The leading haptic goes into the equator of the capsular bag and now I take a forceps, hold it and in this way I come to the trailing end. Take the Macpherson. In my left hand, I take the Sinsky hook, place the tip of the Sinsky hook in the eyelet of the trailing end and here I am not able to release it, so I go a little further and turn the Sinsky hook and it releases the CTR. Some more visco and now this is a free floating nucleus. Okay, before that I am enlarging the Capsulorexis. Make a small cut at around 2 o'clock and make a small enlargement here and this will help. 
since there is a seat here, I do not try to enlarge much. And now see what I am doing, I am going bevel down and making a tunnel. Since this is a free floating nucleus, I use reflux, come out, turn the handpiece, make the bevel up. Why? Because this is a free floating nucleus and it is very difficult to engage into the lens matter in bevel down, bevel up position. I went through the tunnel, got a nice hold of the nucleus and I could get a very nice crack. Come to the other side, hold on heminucleus with vacuum and separate the two heminuclei. Now this heminucleus is chopped into two smaller fragments, come to the other heminucleus, chop this one also into two fragments. The two heminuclei are not equal, they are unequal. And now this large fragments, I start emulsifying from the apex and after emulsifying the apex, I divide the rest into two smaller fragments and, and emulsify. Similarly, okay, this is, uh, these two fragments are joined to each other. I come here, this free nuclear fragment is emulsified and it is a small fragment. Okay, let me tell you the settings and before that, see this band joining the two fragments, how it is released. Apply small bit of ultrasound at the band here and the two fragments become free. Ultrasound is set at 75 percent, flow rate is 45 and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury in this case. And this is the last nuclear piece. What safety measure I can take at this stage? The nucleus is totally unprotected. There is no cortical layer, no epinuclear sheet. And if any moment the posterior capsule can be just touched, just kissed, and I will end up with a rent. So, I inject visco, position the nuclear piece in such a way that it goes towards 6 o'clock. And now I place the intraocular lens hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal lens goes into the capsular bag and now the posterior capsule is 100 percent protected. And I go again with the handpiece and what safety measure at this stage? The tip of the phaco needle has to be kept at the center, the tip must not touch the eye well, it must be at the center so that it is a significant distance away from the corneal endothelium and thus the nuclear piece is emulsified. Done. So, we have taken safety measures at every step while doing rexis, while doing the, while doing the uh, nucleus management, I uh, made a tunnel bevel down. Okay. Now, why this air bubble? The antechamber uh, collapsed and just to maintain the antechamber, we can place air bubble instead of visco. Because if we put visco, we have to spend much more time to clean it. But with air bubble, it's just a second to remove it. I enlarged the side port which was used for the uh, iris hook and through this opening, it was easier to remove the cortex from the upper part because you can see that the rexis uh, the anti-capsular uh, anti tag in the upper part is wider. Done. The uh, nucleus uh, cortical management, cortical cleanup is good. And now we are going to conclude this surgery. This is a moxie and now I hydrate the side port. This is an edited video, the total time, surgical time in this surgery was 17 minutes and for you I have edited to 10 minutes. So this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is, this final lavage is to reduce the incidence of TAS. Integrity of all the wounds are checked, few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded.
Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.